Today is the 11th of May, 2022, and we've just chanted and recollected the qualities of the fully self-awakened Buddha, the Buddha who has this incredible great wisdom, this incredible sharp intelligence and insight into the truth, such that the Buddha was able to win over the kilesas, win over ignorance in his own heart. And this is a wisdom such that no one else in the world, in the human world, the deva world, or the brahma world, would be able to succeed against ignorance, craving, and attachment in the same way. Or no one else would be able to succeed to win over ignorance at all. Only the fully self-awakened Buddha was able to do this. Because usually one needs a teacher one needs someone to show the way to oneself. But the fully self-awakened Buddha knew rightly for himself, and therefore we call him the Sama Sambuddha, the fully self-awakened Buddha, rightly self-awakened. So we recollect this quality of the Buddha, this great wisdom. This is the, the birth of the Buddha in the heart. Because the Buddha, having been born already as a human, upon awakening, this is giving birth to Buddha in the heart. By virtue of this wisdom that could succeed over the kilesas, this is the arising of the Sama Sambuddha in the world, the awakening of the Buddha, the destruction of the kilesas, the defilements. And so we're coming close to the day of Visakha Puja, where we commemorate the birth, awakening, and Parinibbana of the Buddha. Because usually these minds are afflicted with ignorance, craving, and attachment. The minds are not pure. But the Buddha is able to succeed and win over the kilesas to make the mind pure and free from all the afflictions, from all the asavas, from all the outflows. This is something that's not easy to do. And he's also able to teach others the path to do the same. This is the great wisdom that the Buddha was able to teach and also the great compassion. So we see that the Buddha built such great spiritual virtues to succeed in awakening than to teach all beings this path with loving kindness and compassion to set out the Dhamma and Vinaya, the teaching and the discipline that lasts all the way up till the present day. And so this day of Visakha Puja is coming close, which this year, 2022, falls on the 15th of May. And so we recollect the qualities of the Buddha. We cultivate Buddha Nusati, this recollection of the Buddha. We chant and pay homage, pay homage through our practice. We practice generosity and sila strictly. And when we have effort like this, we practice and pay homage like this. This is an immense and huge merit and goodness. And we see that the Buddha had no desire for homage with flowers, he had no wanting for this, he had no desire for people to bow and pay respect, no liking for this. But that which the Buddha wanted us to do is this practice of virtue, collectedness, and wisdom. So we see to what great degree the Buddha had compassion for us. Because the Buddha, what he wanted for us was that which was beneficial, beneficial and useful for us. He didn't want anything for himself. The Buddha doesn't need anything from us, he didn't want or need our praise. But the Buddha wants us to practice, to cut off the defilements in our own hearts, to realize true happiness in our hearts. It's just like a mother and father don't want anything from their child. They want their child to study well, to study subjects that they become skilled at 
and to gain skills and abilities so that they can work and succeed in that work. And so we see that the mother and father is like the Brahma god of the child. And then we recollect the loving kindness and compassion of the Lord Buddha, which is so immense and vast without limit. And we put forth effort into our practice to train the mind. And if we're going to truly know and understand, then we need samadhi, this quality of collectedness, because samadhi leads to wisdom. And virtue is what leads to samadhi, which then leads to wisdom. So we set our hearts on this, we have effort, because the nature of reality, the way things are, is to arise, persist for a little while, and cease. This is normal. This is the quality of being normal. But we oppose this normality. We oppose this nature. We don't accept this reality. We don't believe it. And therefore we suffer. Born into whatever lifetime we suffer, suffer in that lifetime. And we can look at it and summarize it in brief that being born in just one lifetime we practice just in a single day. In that single day, we experience many, many lifetimes. When the eye sees a visual form and there's liking there, that's birth already right there. When there's disliking for a visual form, that's birth right there. The mind has sadness, some outer experience, that's birth again right there. When I was at Lung Pu Cha's monastery, Wat Nong Papong, the bhikkhu sangha was eating their meal and a chicken cried out in the language of chickens. And there was one elderly monk who turned his head to look at the source of the sound and his mind went out to the source of the sound. And Lung Pu Cha used this opportunity to teach about having mindfulness and he said, oh, your mind's been born at the chicken already. Because the chicken made a sound and the mind chased after that sound. The mind went to the sound and that was birth right there. So in a given day, we're born into many, many lifetimes. When the eye sees a form, the ear hears a sound and so on. So we experience many hundreds of lifetimes many thousands, many tens of thousands of lifetimes in a single day. This is birth into self, into me and mine, you and yours, self and other. This is birth into suffering. So we need to take great care about this birth, about this being born. Because we're not yet awakened and we don't yet know the Dhamma, and even if we don't come to know the Dhamma in this lifetime, at the very least we can come to understand and accept that which is normal and natural. Just like Diganaka Brahman, he accepted that having been born, one must age, sicken and die. No one wants this death, but one must accept it. So we need to train our hearts to accept it. We see, for instance, if there's someone who has more power than us and we don't accept that, then what can we do? We can't live in that situation. If we don't accept that which is normal, then we really suffer. We're fighting against nature. Because everything arises, persists, and ceases, ages, sickens, and dies. And we don't accept it, but we can ask, can we fight against that? Can we succeed in that fight? And we see that fighting against it is just more suffering, even more suffering. And we don't want more suffering. But if we accept that which is normal and natural, then we feel at ease. We feel it's normal that everything arises based on a cause. We don't want anger, vengefulness, or feeling hurt. But even though we don't want it, still others critique us and speak harshly to us, look down on us. And so therefore we should see that 
and contemplate this as an old karma of ourselves. We should think that it's an old karma. And when we think like this, then our mind feels at ease. We think that it's an old karma ripening, but we don't make new karma. The new karma we make is speaking well, having loving kindness, thinking in meritorious ways and acting in meritorious ways, setting our hearts to be heedful, not to be heedless. We see that the fully self-awakened Buddha was talking to Venerable Ananda, and he asked Venerable Ananda, how many times in a day do you recollect death? And we see that Venerable Ananda at this point was a stream enterer and had a great amount of work, many duties in his attending to the Buddha. And he answered that he recollected death seven times a day. And the Buddha responded that this is too little. He said that the Tathagata, the Buddha, thinks of death with every in and out breath. Do you see? Therefore, we have to contemplate. We see that the Pachima Buddha Owada, the last teaching of the Buddha, was to set the heart to be heedful. The Buddha taught that change is the nature of conditioned things. Therefore, we should perfect ourselves in heedfulness. These are the last words of the Tathagata. So therefore, we must train in heedfulness, not to be heedless, to recollect death. And this recollection of death is able to cut off worries in the heart. We think that we must die, that we must separate from all that we have and love, that this is normal. And where have we come from? Where do we go? We don't know, but we know that we must die. And given that we must die, why be greedy? Why be angry? Why be vengeful? Why hurt others? because all individual minds, all beings, all want happiness. No one wants suffering. So therefore, we should practice loving kindness and compassion to train our minds well. And when we recollect death in this way, if we have sufficient merit and spiritual virtue that our mind can gather together, that we can see that all things are going to degradation, are going to disintegration, that this is normal to be like this. And so we understand that it's all convention, that everything must pass away, everything must disintegrate, and that nothing, in truth, nothing has a name. There's no me or mine, you or yours, no self to be found. Thinking in terms of self is the delusion, is ignorance. And sometimes we really cling to these conventions that in truth a spittoon is a spittoon, and we cling to that, and we think that a glass is a glass. So this is the quality of not understanding. We think a clock is a clock, a spittoon is a spittoon, a glass is a glass. We think that these names are realities. We take these names and think that they're really true. So this is not understanding convention. If we haven't seen and known clearly for ourselves already, and we don't understand this, and we cling to these conventional truths. If we call a glass a spittoon, or we call a spittoon a glass, in our hearts, we feel that this is wrong. It goes against what we feel is right. And if the teacher says, pass me that glass, and he's referring to the spittoon, or pass me that spittoon, and he's referring to the glass, then we think that the teacher is lost and confused. We think that the spittoon is not a glass, and the glass is not a spittoon. But in truth, these are just conventions. If we've spent our whole lives calling a glass a spittoon, and our whole life calling a spittoon a glass, then that would just be normal for us. So we see that in truth, it's just a convention. 
So a Dhamma practitioner will see that the glass and the spittoon, really they don't exist. They're not really there. That there's no self to be found. It's all just a convention. The sense of me and mine, you and yours and other, it's only a convention. So to understand this, to see this, is to understand the Dhamma. So we see that virtue leads to samadhi. Samadhi leads to wisdom. Wisdom leads to clear knowing. And this leads to freedom and liberation. So greed, aversion, or delusion, everything in the world isn't truly existing. Materiality is emptiness, and emptiness is materiality. In truth, there's nothing there to be found. All things are empty, and emptiness is Buddha. Buddha is in all things, and all is emptiness. So we don't see this, and this is lacking wisdom. And the Lord Buddha had such great wisdom, and he saw clearly that all things arise based on a cause, he saw that there was no self to be found in any of it, any of this process, and thereby his mind became pure and liberated, and thereafter taught that we should establish ourselves in heedfulness to follow the path that the Buddha walked, the path to liberation. So we practice this recollection of the Buddha. This gives rise to faith. We also can recollect death as well. This can bring our heart a feeling of sangwega, this feeling of disenchantment, dispassion, and desire to escape from our predicament. And the mind collects in samadhi. And in the end, the qualities of sila, samadhi, and wisdom gather together. Wisdom arises, and a true miracle arises in the heart. This knowing, this wisdom arises, and this is the arising of inner wealth, this noble wealth in the heart. This is a wealth that no fire, no flood, no thief, no calamity can take from us. Nuclear war can't destroy this wealth. There's no danger in the world that can take away this wealth of wisdom, this noble wealth in the heart. So an intelligent being will seek out this inner wealth with wisdom. So may you have effort in this. May you persevere. May you practice and pay homage with your practice from today up till Wisaka Puja on the 15th of May. May you really set your hearts to understand and see that all things are not self in order to see clearly the Dhamma.